Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and this time we've got a bit of an addendum to a previous video actually video 45 that I released a couple of weeks ago uh, which was about a long term review of the Hantec DSO 5102P which is just behind me here and I've had this scope for a year so I was just looking back at what I've done with it and I'm very grateful to uh, somebody who made a comment, a guy called uh, M.E. who looks like M. Spacey uh, who suggested that at, um, let's just get this right, at 15 minutes 42 seconds there was something slightly odd happened to the voltage display as I was changing the time base so let's just have a look at the original clip, here it is and as you can see, as I'm changing the time base there, the voltage appears to jump. So what I've decided to do, having read that, was first of all, I thought I'm going to investigate this, and I have done. So let's now have a look at um, what I found, and then let's look at um, some of the results that are graphed up. OK, so to just demonstrate uh, what ME so, uh, so observantly spotted, um, this is the... Uh, scope. It's attached to my Tiny SA spectrum analyzer and I'm using the frequency generation function uh, and I've got a 90 megahertz signal um, fed into the scope at the moment. Time base as you can see here is 20 nanoseconds and the scope is telling me that's about 2.40 volts peak to peak. If I now change the time base to 8 nanoseconds Notice quite a change in the voltage, it's now gone to 2.68, so I'll just switch back so you can see it. And I've just put the marker line there for a moment for you. If I now turn up, as you can see, there's a notable difference. Now, I don't know exactly what the output of my tiny SA is, and I've got nothing else to measure it on. Uh, but what I do know is that um, the time base speed... Uh, won't affect the signal that's going into the scope, so clearly something um, isn't quite right there, a bit of a glitch. Um, so what I've done is I've actually taken measurements every 10 megahertz, from 10 megahertz right up to 100 megahertz. So let's now go and have a look at, um, at the graphs that I've produced from those measurements. OK, so let's have a look at uh, the results I got when I took uh, measurements uh, over a, a series of frequency ranges. So here we've got on the uh, x-axis, we've got frequency in megahertz over at 10 megahertz steps, and I took 10 measurements. On the y-axis, we've got voltage from 0 to 3.5 volts, as you can see. And just for um, reference, I've marked the approximate 3 dB down point for a, a voltage of that magnitude. And as you can see, it tracks its um, the voltage fairly reasonably up to certainly above 70 megahertz but then starts to tail off um, as you'd actually expect with most scopes and it appears to cross the 3 dB point um, somewhere between 90 and 100 megahertz so isn't quite achieving the um, stated bandwidth of 100 megahertz. Now that's at a time base of 20 nanoseconds and as I've just shown you on the screen it really shouldn't make any difference to um, a constant signal, a constant input signal, um, what what speed the time base is. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put onto this graph the same results for 8 nanoseconds. And as you can see, um, that's quite a different shape. And indeed, uh, the 8 nanoseconds, assuming my uh, tiny SA is putting out the same level of signal as the frequency increases, and that I can't be sure of. Um, one thing is for sure, both sets of graphs were taken from the same instrument, so there's, there's clearly a difference. So what's that all about? Well, I don't know. It's clearly a glitch in the in the software on the scope somewhere, um, and maybe it's their way of trying to compensate. Now, yeah, OK, you need to be aware, bear in mind of that if you're going to be taking re re readings um, at that sort of frequency, which you may be. Um, and if you look at the 20 nanosecond display, here's a screen grab of it. Um, actually, at that point, there's quite a lot of waveforms being displayed. So one of the things I would probably do, even without thinking, is I would probably um, 
speed up the time base so I could see uh, less waves and a little bit more detail and if you actually do that so you've now got there for comparison the 20 nanosecond at the bottom and the 8 nanosecond waveform at the top and you can see the change in voltage it's fairly distinctive and I, I suspect I would probably naturally be using the top one so it's likely I'd probably get uh, a more reasonable result however uh, it clearly is um, a glitch so it's just something to be aware of and I thought that was just worth pointing out um, so well done to um, ME for spotting that very good spot um, 10 out of 10 for observation nice one okay well I hope that's um, been of some interest if you own one of these scopes clearly you need to be careful um, of the time base speed that you're using when, when you're taking measurements and as I mentioned earlier remember of course that um, this is a big assumption that the um, tiny SA signal generator puts out a, a signal of the same level as the, as the frequency increases that I don't know because I've got nothing to check it on however um, the scope certainly shouldn't show a different voltage at different time based speeds so there's clearly a bit of a glitch there so it's something to bear in mind hope that's proved useful thanks again to ME for um, spotting that well done good spot appreciated um, keep the comments coming if you've liked the video please click the thumbs up if not you can click the thumbs down either way thanks very much for watching please consider subscribing and we'll see you on the next one